Hello everybody, my name is Jordan, also known as JMonster, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about our community RP rules. This is going to be part of an ongoing series that is destined for newer players to the RP, so if you're out there and you want to play in the RP and you're maybe a little bit confused about what fits into the rule book and where, then this is going to be the series for you. The first thing that we're going to do is talk a little bit about army composition, and then in subsequent videos we're going to move on to what constitutes a mid-tier, a high-tier, a bodyguard tier, etc, etc, because it's not really down to the price. It is for multiplayer, but for the purposes of the, purposes of the RP, uh, it does have to work a little bit differently in order to allow people a little bit more freedom when it comes to their composition. So if we do it solely based on price, uh, then that won't really work based on the rules that we have for the RP. So let's take a look at the Assyrian faction. That's the faction that I'm going to be playing with in the RP. So it's probably a good place that we start there. So let's take a look at uh, the composition rules generally. So we've gone with a system similar to the older Warhammer Fantasy rules, and I think these rules still apply in... Warhammer 40k, but I might be mistaken. It's been a long time since I played the tabletop. Uh, but overall, you have a, a possibility of bringing 20 units to the battlefield. And what you can bring is broken down by tier and percentage. So 60% of your army needs to be a mid-tier unit. Uh, so in, for example, with the Syriand, uh, actually a lot of factions are going to break down this way. The Wrath L'Oreal tier the Adorant tier, and the Gelion tier as well are all going to be mid-tier units. So I can have a mix of Spear Host, Skirmishers of Wrath Loreal, Hunters of Wrath Loreal, to whatever proportion I want, up to a maximum of 12. So let's see, I could bring four Skirmishers of Wrath Loreal, four Spear Host of Wrath Loreal, and then I could also bring four Scouts of Gelion. And that is going to be my maximum amount of mid-tiers for a single army. I cannot bring more mid-tiers. I can't bring less mid-tiers at the expense of high tiers. It all has to be proportional. And the purpose behind this is so that you can't really like doomstack cheese the way you would on, uh, on a campaign, for example. Uh, but it also brings more units into the campaign. It actually increases diversity by putting these restrictions in place because you have to bring more things to different uh, armies. And you're not just going to have a one-size-fits-all thing. You will have to tailor it according to what your needs are going to be, who you think you're going to be facing, whatever uh, rebel factions are in the area and you want to take them on. You want to, of course, tailor your armies to your needs at hand. And these restrictions do promote that. So if I wanted to, say, attack a city, for example... Uh, and this is why price isn't really a factor for this. It's really more like I, I as the, the lead developer, the person who designed conceptually a lot of these factions, I know what fits into a mid-tier and I know what fits into the high tier. So that's kind of why we're not doing it by price, but rather by what I know from having designed the factions. So if I wanted to bring a couple of artillery pieces... Uh, I wouldn't be able to just tack them into my high tier, despite the fact that, you know, it does cost money to bring a, ballist, a ballista. It's a 850 uh, catapults or 1,000. Those are the sort of price points that you get for, you know, units of like Urfan and Tower or like Kinsmen of Denethor and yada, yada, yada. So they actually come out of your mid-tier um, card slots. So you could bring, say, if I got rid of two Skirmishers of Wrath L'Oreal and I wanted to bring two ballistas, then... That's what I can do. So I've got my 10 mid-tiers, two artillery pieces, and then we move on to the next tier. That's going to be high tier. Uh, Outriders of Dwilwin are, are a high tier unit. The new Randir Mental Galen, also considered to be high tier. All legendary companies are considered to be high tier, but they're also capped at one. So I couldn't bring, say, six Ondo Hyando and Sarnathrod. Six. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to bring that many. I could bring one Ando Hyando, and I could bring, say, three Urfan and Tower, and I could bring two Outriders of Dwilwin, and that would satisfy my uh, my requirement there. Um, next, we have the Bodyguard tier units. So for us at the end, you're going to have three options there. Uh, you're going to have the Kinsmen of Denethor, the Mythern and Tolgalen, and you're going to have the Ents, and they can fill up those last two slots there, which gives you a decent amount of utility. So let's say I wanted to fight a really heavily armored faction. So I want to lean quite heavily into my Urfan and Tower. 
I'm also going to want the Outriders of Dwellwind because they have the Armor Piercing Charge. I'm probably going to bring, oh, within the neighborhood of, maybe I want to fill up as much as half of my mid-tier um, selection with the Hunters of Wrath Oriel. They're all a bunch of harassment javelins. It's going to be a useful thing for me to have. And uh, then I can take my Mithern and Tilgalen, pop them in there. And I've also got uh, some options here for what I want to fill out with the rest of it. So maybe I want to bring some more cavalry. Maybe I want to take advantage of, say, they have a lack of mobility. Then I could bring, you know, four to six units of my centers of Gelion. This is a very, like, fluid, very, like, skirmish-oriented army. Or maybe I just want to bring some foot archers. Maybe I want to bring, like, four uh, scouts of Gelion and... Then I have my options here uh, in terms of what I want to fill out these last two slots with. Do I want to bring some extra spearmen? Do they maybe field some cavalry? Maybe I'm going against the Sons of Feanor, for example. Um, or maybe I want to bring the Spearhost of Gelion, and I can use them in a variety of different ways. They can uh, potentially hide if you take them out of Phalanx, or you can also use them as makeshift shock troops and then turn on their Phalanx mode, and they're a decent enough... Um, like frontline unit that can that can hold and grind it out better than a lot of the other green elves can, or it's really down to what you want to do. Uh, so maybe I want to get rid of one of the mythern, and I want to stick Ents in there instead, and then I've got something really sturdy uh, in the form of the mythern and Tolgalen. They're much better armored, especially with that armor upgrade, than the kinsmen of Denethor, who are distinctly a medium uh, armored unit, whereas the mythern and Tolgalen are definitely a uh, a heavily armored unit and you can actually bump up their armor to about 11 so they do offer some extra protection for your general uh, and then I've got all the extra armor piercing here and then I've you know I've got my my two remaining slots like I said for uh, maybe there's gonna be sieges going on maybe I really need two ballistas or they're gonna have a lot of artillery and I want to use those ballistas to counter snipe them or whatever it happens to be so that's the basic sort of uh, rules for your army composition and as you can see it does allow you a lot of flexibility and it does encourage diversity and specialization whereas you know otherwise I could just bring you know five Mythern and I could bring Outriders and I could bring like six or seven of the Yondo Hyondo and maybe I want to mix them in with some Urfin and Towers maybe I want to go with like a five uh, a 5-5 five, five split here with basically everything. And then the rest of your roster kind of gets left behind. And this right here, it's anti-armor, it's anti-cavalry, um, potentially very anti-infantry, also anti-monster. It kind of would do everything for you. Whereas with the restrictions, you do have to think a little bit more about who you're going to be fighting and what you want to bring, which I think makes for a little bit more of an interesting ride than uh, than doomstacks that are just sort of a one-size-fit-all solution to every uh, challenge you may face. Or you could do something horrible like bringing 20 Ents, which would probably be very expensive, but it would also be, like, not fun for players to play against. I mean, you can get away with this when you're fighting the AI, because who cares about what the AI thinks? They're not going to complain about it. When you are playing with other people, um, it does become a bit of a, a bit of an issue. So, yeah, hopefully that, uh, that clarifies the rules for everybody. Let's do one more army, just so everyone is, is kind of on the same page. And let's take someone who's a little bit more elite heavy. Uh, Gondolin, I think, has the potential for some really interesting armies. So Gondolin, their high tier units are Gallants, Shield Bearers, Axemen of the Pillar, Armorers of the Hammer, Retainers of the King, uh, actually, Retainers of the King are Bodyguard tier. Uh, Marksmen of the Heavenly, Heavenly Arch, Champions of the Fountain, and Knights of the Golden Flower. Uh, everything else, including the artillery, obviously is going to come out of your mid-tier budget. Oops. So if I wanted to build, say, a basic sort of Gondolin 20 stack, I'm going to need to include at least some mid-tiers here. And we do have a system in place to allow you to buy some chevrons. So this is potentially an, an army that you could make, um, not necessarily right off the bat, but shortly after, I would say like five or maybe ten turns in. You can bring a front line of some guardsmen of the harp, give them some attack upgrades, give them some chevron upgrades, make them extra sticky. Uh, at which point you've got five. So you could then bring some spearmen of the swallow, give you a little bit of extra punch there, so it's going to bring it to 9. 
10, 11, 12, which is a nice little like spread here. Um, and then you can fill that out with six of your high tier units. So you can have six high tier units total. So we could bring some gallons of the wing because their uh, their morale boost does synchronize quite well with the rest of our mid tier roster. And then we've got another four options there. We could bring up to say four units of Hammer of Wrath if that's what we needed. We could bring, um, let's see here, we could bring two Marksmen of the Heavenly Arch and two Knights of the Golden Flower, or we could bring four of each if we wanted to, or we could bring, you know, like a mix. We could bring one unit of Knights of the Golden Flower and then dump the rest into Champions of the Fountain, who are also pretty good. They've also got a nice little morale buff on them, so that'll help the mid-tiers uh, uh, stay in the fight for a little bit longer, synchronizes pretty nicely, and then you've got options for your bodyguard tiers. You could bring say one lord of the golden flower, or you could bring two lords of the golden flower, or you could bring two retainers of the king if that's what you wanted. Maybe you don't have the uh, lords of the golden flower available to you uh, on that particular tile or at that particular stage in the game. There's a lot of options, is what I'm trying to impress upon you, um, for building your armies for addressing uh, threats and challenges in a, a reasonable way that I think encourages diversity and moves people away from that traditional, yes, here's a doom stack, I'm just gonna bring 50 dragons or you know 20 catapults or something like that. It keeps things like useful, like having two catapults is really nice to have in a field battle. Or if you're besieging somebody, you've got the trebuchet and then you've got the crews in addition too, Gondolin crews in particular are quite unique when it comes to their uh, artillery crewmen. And so the trebuchets will net you a couple of, uh, of halberd units that have a phalanx, which is really nice. Um, so there's tons of diversity, and I think that's really brought to the fore, because that's what the mod is kind of all about. Like, using your smaller rosters, but also everyone having, like, defined play styles, everything having, like, an important role, and you're not being able to just, like, spam them out to the exclusion of everything else. So I think that's fairly consistent with the approach that we take to the mod as a whole. Hopefully you guys enjoy the rules, and uh, I think people are still looking for generals. I think most of our faction leader spots have been filled, so generals are just the people that play the battles, basically. Um, and so if you're interested in getting into the RP and playing some multiplayer battles with other members of the community, they have a little bit of context and some stakes behind them in the form of uh, consequences in the RP. Uh, loss of territory, gaining territory, etc., etc. Then I recommend that you stop by our Discord. You can find a link for that down in the description. But in any case, my name is Jordan, also known as JMonster. I hope you guys found this useful, edifying. If you have any additional questions, drop them down below, or wait for the next video because I will be going through the factions individually to give you a sense of what is a high tier unit and what is not, uh, and mid tier and bodyguard tier and so forth. But in any case, my name is Jordan, also known as JMonster. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.